Hello everyone, I'm Kyle, and today I'll be discussing the work I've done on modeling modern GPU applications in GEM5. Over the past five to ten years or so, GPU applications have become increasingly prevalent in modern society. The main examples being things like machine learning and neural networks, as well as some other things such as virtual and augmented reality applications. So with the expansion of GPU applications, we want to be able to start modeling these GPU applications to further optimize them. And as it so happens, GEM5 contains a GPU model which is based on a modern GPU architecture. However, there are a couple of challenges associated with using this model as it requires a software stack that is challenging to get up and running, and the software stack in particular is meant for real hardware, not for simulation, so there are some inefficiencies. And just as a note, I will mainly be focusing on the work with getting machine learning applications up and running. So because there are challenges with simply getting the GPU model up and running, the main goal here is to try and increase the usability of the GPU model, both make it simpler to run and easier to run the things that you want to run. So how do we want to go about this? The first thing is to try and create some sort of portable resource that can be downloaded and used anywhere so you aren't simply tied to a single machine. The second thing is that portable resource needs to be in a known working configuration. It simplifies the setup and it allows for easier debugging and figuring out if there's a bug in the simulator, if there's a bug in the software stack or whatnot. And finally, we want to try and optimize the GPU software stack in order to avoid simulating extraneous code that will only slow down the simulation and won't provide us any more detail. A little bit of detail on the GPU support in Gem 5. It is an execution-driven cycle-level simulator, just like the CPUs are, and it's meant to give a very accurate model of the GPU. The prior work built the GPU model in Gem 5 and got the interface working with the Rockham user stack and was able to get the HIP and HCC applications up and running. If you look in the top left, you see you've got your benchmark. This is written in something compatible with HIP or HC. It then gets compiled using HCC. HCC will compile and add in the GPU code. This then, then there's a diverging code flow where you've got the interface with the kernel driver itself, the ROCK-K kernel driver that's emulated in GEM5. And then on the other side, the GPU code itself gets extracted and loaded in the simulator in order to run. For more information about the GPU model in GEM5, Matt and Tony have a talk in the GEM5 workshop about it. The work on the previous slide implemented these components of the overall Rockham framework and associated libraries. It implemented the version of Rockham 1.6, it implemented HCC and HIP, and it also implemented OpenCL. However, in order to run machine learning and machine intelligence applications, we need to add in a much larger set of libraries. In particular, we need to add in the base machine intelligence library, MIOpen, and then we need to add in the associated libraries that MIOpen uses. For instance, MIOpenGem is used for its matrix multiplication, and HIPBLOS and ROCKBLOS are used as the basic linear algebra subsystem for MIOpen. But the main thing to note is that you need all of these libraries in order to run these modern machine intelligence applications. So coming from the previous slide, we saw exactly how many different libraries we need to get up and running in order to get these modern GPU applications working. Now the main challenge with getting these libraries installed is that we need very specific versions of them. The base version of Rockham that we can use is version 1.6. Anything newer just isn't supported in our GPU model. This requires that we use very specific versions of the libraries that were mentioned on the previous slide. In particular, MIOpen and MIOpenGem need to be version 1.2. On top of that, we want to be able to compile some of these libraries from source, and that requires GCC 5.4. Naturally, this leads to a high barrier to entry. There are a lot of eccentricities involved with installing the versions of the software stack that we need. Overall, our goal is to make it easy for new users to use the Gem5 GPU model. The way that we went about this is by creating a portable resource. In particular, we use a Docker container. This Docker container contains the minimum amount of software required to install Gem5 and to install the Rockham software stack. In this Docker container, you're able to build and run Gem5, and you're also able to build to install Gem5 and to install the Rockham software stack. In this Docker container, you're able to build and run Gem5, and you're also able to build will want to run in the GPU model. 
Additionally, this is publicly available and we've integrated it into the public Gem5 repo. And another thing to note about using this and having it integrated in the Gem5 repo is that it can be used in continuous integration, which allows us to ensure that as we add new features to the GPU model, we don't break anything that we made in the past. And finally, another benefit to using a container is that it's easier to update in the event that we get newer versions of Rock'em working or we find newer optimizations to make. So now that we have an idea of what it takes to get the software stack up and running so we can run these applications, let's see what happens when we're running a native MIOpen application on a real GPU. So your host application will identify what sort of MIOpen backend it wants to use. It will identify what type of GPU kernel it will want to run and it will identify configuration information about the layout of your memory. It will then pass that all to MIOpen, and MIOpen will then look at the appropriate backend and identify what the most optimal kernel is to run given the parameters it was given. However, when we start trying to run these MIOpen applications in the simulator, we note very quickly that the code base and the simulator aren't optimized for each other. In MIOpen, it may determine that the best kernel for your various parameters is an OpenCL kernel. It will check to see if that kernel exists in its cache, and if it doesn't have it, it will try and compile it on the fly. This sort of online compilation is unsupported in Gem5, and your application will crash. Secondly, if MIOpen is told to use a Gem kernel, it will call MIOpen Gem. And in order for MIOpen Gem to determine the best kernel for you to use, it will generate a database of every possible solution for all the possible kernels that fit the parameters it was given. And this will occur on the fly, every run. This leads to a very large amount of your time in the simulation being spent generating this database, which is something that we want to avoid. So how do we optimize these libraries for simulation? Well, with MIOpen, we've found that we can generate the kernel files ahead of time using real hardware. We also created a patch that allows us to generate the proper kernel files, even if we're using a different type of hardware from what we're simulating. Then we're able to link in these kernel files to the Docker container when we're running our program, and this allows us to completely avoid that generating kernel step. For MIOpen Gem, newer versions of MIOpen are able to use RockBloss in addition to MIOpen Gem when a Gem kernel is requested. And the benefit of this is that Rockbloss generates the database of potential solutions and optimal solutions when it is installed as opposed to on the fly like MIOpenGem does. Essentially what we've done here is we have taken the work that was being done in the simulator and we've done it ahead of time. This is going to be a demonstration of how to use the Docker file to build Gem5, build an application, and run the application in Gem5. So the first thing I'm going to do is clone the GCN repository. Next, I'm going to clone Gem5 resources. Next, I'm going to build the Docker image. So we do that by going to Gem5, util, Docker files, GCN GPU. Then run Docker build. Name it whatever you want. As you can see, it built successfully, and it said that it's tagged as GCN Demo Latest. Now that we've built our image, we want to build Gem5. So to do that, we want to go to the directory above our Gem5 directory, and then run the following command. Using dash dash rm allows for the container to be removed after the container is finished running. Dash v allows you to link in your directory, in this case your Gem5 directory and you link it in to slash gem5 in the container. You set your working directory to slash gem5 in the container. That means when you're in the container, you're running in slash gem5. The next parameter is the image name, which I named GCN demo. And then after this, you run your command, which in this case will be the gem5 build command.
as you can see, Gem5 has now been built. So next we will build a sample application, in this case, Square. To build Square, we're going to use a command very similar to what we just did. In this case, the only thing we're really changing is we're passing in Gem5 resources instead of Gem5. And the command we're running is make Square. And we can see that Square got built. To run Square, first we need to do our Docker command. And as you can see, we were able to run Square. If you want to see the stats, because we linked in our Gem5 directory to the container, the stats are still placed where you would expect them to do. So go to Gem5, M5 out, and stats. This slide contains information about the applications that we've tested and the sort of applications that we've been getting working. Going through these applications in order, we start with DNNMark, which is a benchmark suite to test various layers of a neural network. Next, we've got DeepBench, which is used to benchmark various types of neural networks. In particular, we've tested recurrent neural networks and convolutional neural networks. The HIP sample applications are benchmarks that are used to verify that your Rockham installation works and that various components of your Rockham installation work. Additionally, these are the types of applications that we want to implement in the continuous integration to verify that we don't break anything when we patch the GPU model. If we look at all the different possible types of machine learning or machine intelligence applications, in this work we have been focused on working with native applications in order to get MIOpen working. Now, the next step that we want to take with this is to try and work on something like CAFE, TensorFlow, or PyTorch. Because we have the base layer of MIOpen working, we have a good starting point for this. However, whenever you add a new framework or a new library, there's always going to be new interactions that you haven't tested before, so we'll need to ensure that all of those interactions work. If we try and get this support for these high-level frameworks working, we want to also work on extending checkpointing support to work with the GPU model, as these machine learning frameworks are typically used to create very large networks that will take hours to days to even weeks to run on real hardware. By extending checkpointing support, we will be able to further optimize our simulation time and focus on simulating the regions of interest that we have, as opposed to simulating the entire application. In conclusion, Gem5's GPU model is capable of modeling modern high-fidelity GPUs and these modern GPU applications. However, the main challenge up until now was that getting the GPU model set up and using the GPU model was very difficult. The work that I've done has improved the usability of the GPU model by creating a portable resource that contains a known working environment, allowing us to reduce the setup time and reproduce an environment very consistently and very easily. Additionally, I've added in simulator-specific optimizations to the GPU software stack, allowing us to avoid doing work in the simulator that can be done outside of the simulator. Additionally, we are currently working on integrating GPU regression testing into the develop branch using this Docker file. That way we can ensure that any new changes to the GPU model won't break existing applications. By doing this, we reduce the barriers to entry for simulation, allowing more people to use the GPU model, and allowing people to run more complicated applications than they could before. Thank you.